You know, I talk to people all the time about how the culture has changed, how the world around us has changed, and how the church needs to change in the way that it connects and engages those outside of the church. One of the things that we're realizing is that there is a post-Christian and a post-modern culture that is emerging. What I mean by post-Christian is this. We don't have home court advantage anymore. Do you know what I mean? People no longer come to the institutional church for the answers to their spiritual questions and longings. In fact, when we get into a discussion about God, the question becomes, well, what God are you talking about? We're not on the same page. In fact, more and more people not only don't know the Christian worldview, but they look negatively on the Christian faith. So where does this negativity come from? Where it comes from is from a postmodern disillusionment with religion in general. But not just religion, but a disillusionment with science, disillusionment with education, disillusionment with economics, disillusionment with technology, even disillusionment with the family. That is the new normal that we find ourselves in. There are three characteristics that I want to focus on today that show us what postmodernism is all about. They are deconstructionism, relativism, and pluralism. Let's take the first one, deconstructionism. What that is about is looking at all previous assumptions and trying to question and tear down those assumptions whenever possible. Related to that is this idea that there is no absolute truth, that there is uh, merely just interpretation, and also that there is no universal meta-narrative. What I mean by that is that there's not a universal story that can apply to all cultures and to all peoples. In fact, universal narratives are seen as a way for those in charge to oppress and to manipulate those that they're trying to change to their worldview. Related to this is this idea of relativism. What relativism really means is this. Well, that might be true for you, but that doesn't mean that it's true for me. That might be okay for you, but that doesn't mean that that's okay for me. That might be right behavior for you, but don't place that expectation on me. That's what relativism is about at its core. It's distrust and disillusionment and the questioning of anybody who might think they have a corner on the truth. Another feature of postmodernism is this idea of religious pluralism. Let me tell you what I mean by that. You know, when I was a kid, I remember when the first uh, self-serve soda fountains came out. We were so excited. We were excited because not only did we have to drink just one soda, but we could have our choice. In fact, we could drink all the sodas if we wanted. So we took a little bit of Diet Coke and Coke Zero, Mellow Yellow, Punch, Sprite, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, A&W, Mountain Dew, and we created this cocktail that we called a kamikaze, and we were so excited to drink it. It's been a long time since I've done that. You know what? More isn't always better. In fact, if you think about it, this isn't very satisfying. It's not the real thing. Well, in the same ways, in postmodernism, people are doing that with religion. They're taking a little bit of Hinduism and Buddhism and Islam and Christianity and paganism, you name it, and they're creating their own religion in a sense. Why seek the truth when you can create your own truth? But here's the reality. It's not satisfying. It doesn't satisfy you. And that's the message that we have to bring. That the transformed lives that we have experienced have satisfied us. They fill those empty spaces in us that we tried so hard to fill. They've answered those spiritual longings. Let me share this idea with you. I don't think God is saying to God's self, I'm stumped by this postmodernism, this post-Christian society, culture in North America. 
No, I think we have a lot of hope because God has a plan and God has a mission that God has called us to, a mission to engage others, a mission to be part of God's plan to bring wholeness in a broken world. We want to live out, we want to commit ourselves to the prayer that we pray together, the Lord's Prayer, and especially that one section of that prayer where we pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth. Yes, that means wherever you are, wherever I am, on earth as it is in heaven.